Good morning and welcome once again to Online Church with Pastor D. This is the day that the Lord has made and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. I am looking forward to sharing this word with you today and completing what we've been studying on why does God allow bad things to happen to his children. This is part four and part final. Uh, welcome to all of those who are logging on now and joining us in this broadcast. This is Online Church with Pastor D. And we're here every Sunday, generally speaking, uh, at 8 o'clock live on Facebook. And then later on, it is uploaded to YouTube. Uh, so you can check it out there, uh, either on my Facebook page, Philip Drayton, or you can go to YouTube and look for Philip Drayton, then Pastor D. And you can subscribe. And all of my messages, all that I have ever preached online, are there. And you can check them out at your leisure. Also, there's a 15-minute broadcast called Reflections that I do each week, usually on Thursdays. It is released Thursday evening. And that can also be found on Pastor D YouTube channel, as well as on Gospel Circle Barbados. That is the channel of my brother who uh, edits my videos. And then, of course, you can email me if you so desire at phildbage, phildbage at gmail.com or WhatsApp me directly at 1246255-7953. Well, I don't know if you're excited, but I certainly am excited. And I want to just let you know of a special offer that we have. First time we're doing anything like this, but I think it's actually absolutely wonderful. So in partnership with Messenger International and Things Gospel, um, of course, with Online Church with Pastor D, we want to offer you a free book. Uh, this wonderful book is entitled, God, Where Are You? And here is a, a picture of what this book looks like. I hope you can see it well without me blocking my lovely face. What's that? Yes, yes. Okay, my wife is there helping me to preach even though I haven't started to preach yet. This book is available for leaders. So if you're a leader in your church um, or you're a pastor in the church, notice I made a distinction there. You can be a leader without being a pastor, but this has been given to us for leaders. All right, we just have 50 copies that have been made available to us. Uh, so if you're interested in getting one of these free books, they will be available at Things Gospel, one of the two stores, either Bridgetown or Warren's. And you can just go in and say online church. You don't even have to say Pastor D. And you will get this. This book will be available from the 1st of December. That's Tuesday, the 1st of December. It will be available free of cost. As a matter of fact, uh, it says, Do you feel lost in a difficult season? Wondering, God, where are you? This is the book for you. My wife has been reading it. I haven't read it yet. But uh, she's saying it's an excellent book. So it's available for you from December 1st. If you are a leader or you are a pastor in your local assembly, this book is available for you. Please go to Things Gospel and say online church and you will receive a free copy of this book. When the 50 copies are gone, then they will be no more available unless we get a new arrangement that we can widen the, the scope of their availability. So you will enjoy this book. It will be a blessing to you. And of course, while you're in Things Gospel, it's an excellent time to pick up something for Christmas reading material or Christmas gifts that you want to bless your family with or certain people who are close to you. Today is November 29th, and I want to say up front, happy anniversary to all of my Bajan brothers and sisters and brothers and sisters in the Lord as we celebrate 54 years tomorrow it is our national independence the u.s has had their thanksgiving a couple days ago and black friday crazy crazy time but this is our time of celebration independence day this uh, november 30th it is also supposed to be the end of the hurricane season it, it is from june 1st to november 30th but from what we're seeing on the weather maps the weather will continue to be not the best weather but we are glad for the rain we do need that all right so happy independence tomorrow to all of my brothers and sisters uh, sharing in this wonderful opportunity uh, for this nation. And then I also want to let you know what's happening in terms of my preaching and stuff. A couple of weeks ago, one of my brothers in uh, Canada watched one of the broadcasts and he sent me a message and he said, Pastor D, you're looking tired. Well, the truth is I am. 
uh, and when I looked at last week's broadcast, which was a catastrophe, but anyway, it all worked out in the end. Uh, the settings, apparently the default settings for live streaming on uh, Facebook, uh, default settings are private. Um, so I did not realize that, and therefore the broadcast did go out at 8 o'clock as usual, but it was only for my eyes. So it was only uh, literally a couple hours later, 11 o'clock or so, that I was able to fix that and make it public so other people could go and view it. And if you've been following in this message, that is an important uh, big section of why does God allow bad things to happen to his children. Today is the climax of that message. But let me tell you, I'm going to take some time off. As a matter of fact, from Tuesday, I will be on holiday. Uh, somebody kind of laughed at me and said, on holiday from what? <laughs> but I will be on holiday. I'm still doing pretty much everything a pastor would do, except without a lot of the administra administrative stuff that pastors do. But I'm still counseling people. I have two weddings in December. I had one this month, November. Um, I still visit Chatins. I mean, just about everything a pastor would do, I'm still doing. I'm still meeting with leaders, still sharing, uh, being a bishop uh, as well. So I'm doing everything that we do, but the truth is with the challenges that we've been facing as a family, myself and my wife, we're really feeling uh, tired, weary. And so I'm going to take some time off in December, but let me tell you this now, all of my reflections have been recorded uh, like Christmas messages right down to December 24th. In terms of online church, I will be here next Sunday with my Christmas journey. That's the first Sunday of December. And then I will preach twice more in December. So December 6th, my Christmas journey. And the next message will be December 24th. That is Christmas Eve. I will go live at 8 o'clock on Christmas Eve. It will be my Christmas message. So if you're interested, I know some of you will be at work and so on. But if you're interested in hearing a Christmas message, you can find it there on my channel, either YouTube or Facebook. Uh, Christmas morning, whenever you choose to listen to it, but it will be broadcast live on the 24th of December. That's a Thursday morning at 8 o'clock. So you can check if you're if you're able to tune in with me. That's wonderful. If not, check it out later. Uh, the idea is not to have an audience necessarily. The idea really is to put the word out there so people have access to it. So December 6th, Sunday morning, Sunday coming. Uh, December 24th, Thursday, December 24th, Christmas message, and then All Year's Night, or as the, the North Americans say, New Year's Eve. I will be on at 11.15 p.m., 11.15 in the night, and I'll be sharing a special message for All Year's, a little bit of re um, reflections and uh, retrospect for what has gone on during the year, as well as looking to the new year. One or two testimonies will be shared as well. And then right after midnight, well, as soon as we tip over into the new year, I am going to share you and lead you in a communion service. I'm looking forward to that. Uh, you would need to get your bread. You need to get whatever juice or wine you celebrate with. But we will have communion. The first thing we will do in 2021 is remember the Lord Jesus Christ in the communion. So I want to encourage those of you who don't have anywhere to go on earlier's night, you want to stay up and, and see the new year in, join with me for that special communion service uh, online on New Year's morning right after midnight, all year's night. Okay, so you're welcome. December 6th, December 24th, December 31st, I will be here for online church. Otherwise than that, you will not find me except on the uh, reflections that have already been recorded and will be released each Thursday evening in the month of December. So here we are. We are completing this study today on why does God allow bad things to happen to his children. And if I am reading my notes correctly, I have shared with you nine points already. I have another six to share with you and a reminder. So it's, we're going to end up on 17, but it's really 16. Uh, and so I want you to just work with me. I'll begin at number 10 today. Uh, get your Bibles if you don't have them yet. Your Amplified New Living Translation. Complete Jewish Bible, King James Bible, and your notebooks. If you've been making notes, people have been enjoying the things I've been sharing. And I thank God for the opportunity to share with you one more time. All right. 
10 minutes have gone already and I haven't started to share as yet. But I will share and I will complete this message. It will not go over into next week. If I, I do go a little longer, I, I trust you will forgive me. But I will not go very deeply into these points, but certainly make sure that you have them. So number 10, number 10, as to why does God allow bad things to happen to his children? Are you ready? All right. Uh, my, my scribe, my wife is here watching uh, audience of one today. Um, but that's all right. That's good. As a matter of fact, she wasn't even supposed to be here. But I thank God she's here. All right. Number 10. Why does God allow bad things to happen to his children? Here we go. In order for us to accomplish his plan or purpose, sometimes we have to go through a wilderness experience. I'll repeat it. Number 10. In order for us to accomplish his plan or purpose, sometimes we have to go through a wilderness experience. Notice they didn't say go through the wilderness, but go through a wilderness experience. And that's kind of the kind of stuff that this book talks about God, where are you? All right, so it's an excellent book. I hope uh, many of you can get it. But anyway, let me move on. Jesus in Luke's Gospel, chapter 4, was driven into the wilderness by the Holy Spirit. Um, the wilderness, that's a desert, in case you don't know. We don't have any deserts in Barbados. All right, so Luke 4 2, Luke 4 2, the second verse says for during amplified bible of course for during 40 days in the wilderness or desert where he was tempted that is tried tested exceedingly by the devil and he ate nothing during those days and when they were completed he was hungry well if you haven't eaten it for 40 days you should be hungry uh look for verse 13 listen to this and when the devil had ended every the complete cycle of temptation he temporarily left him that is stood off from him until another more opportune and favorable time i love how the king james put the amplified puts it now verse 14 is the verse i want you to see then jesus went back full of and under the power of the holy spirit into galilee and the fame of him spread through the whole region round about so Jesus, after being in the wilderness and facing what is called her exceedingly tested, exceedingly, exceeding tests. All right. So it wasn't just two little temptations. It was a, a very strong set of trials and testings that Jesus went through. But when they were completed, Jesus came back full of and under the power of of the Holy Spirit into Galilee. Now, right after this whole wilderness experience took place with Jesus, he was baptized. Remember when, when the Father spoke to heaven and said, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased? It was right after he came out of the desert then he was baptized. Right after that, and most scholars will tell you, that is when Jesus' public ministry began. So before he went into his public ministry. He went through a severe time of testing and trial. Very often I have found that this happens. As a matter of fact, I remember when I went to my five-year reunion after Bible school. So many of my classmates had gone through very, very difficult situations. It seems like God has to kind of put us through a little extra trials and stuff like that to prepare us for ministry, to prepare us to prepare to fulfill his plan, I'm hurrying, <laughs> sorry, to, to prepare us to fulfill his plan or his purpose for our lives, to move us into ministry. That's what he did with Jesus. Very, very likely he'll do the same thing with us as well. So if God wants to accomplish his plan or purpose in your life, very often he will put us through a wilderness experience. Not just a wilderness, but the experiences that Jesus had in the wilderness are the kind of things that we may have to deal with as we prepare for ministry. Now, I know a lot of stuff I'm saying to you are, are not nice things, are not fun things, but hey, this is this is the reality of the gospel. This is the reality of the Christian life and the Christian walk. And I trust that even as we listen to these things, we will look at our own lives and see where we are and maybe where God is dealing with us right now, preparing us to fulfill his plan and his purpose. All right, number 11, number 11, 
and this number 11 is uh, is something that is it is not preached about very often or taught very much, but it is something that I understand very well and something that I've actually represented in three different points. So number 11 is very short, but it has three different points or three different aspects to it. One of the reasons that God allows bad things to happen to his children Number 11 is to break us, to break us, all right? Uh, and the first part, number A, or letter A, sorry, of number 11, to break us, the first part is God will break us to do something positive and very necessary in us. Uh, as I was speaking to you just a moment ago, it's not in my notes, but I was speaking to you, rebellion. Rebellion is something that God has to break and very often he will break his children when they are in a place of rebellion the verse that i actually have here is proverbs 16 and verse 18 which says pride goeth before destruction and an haughty spirit before a fall many times you misquote that and we say pride goes before a fall it does not say that it said pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall listen beloved god loves you too much let me change that god loves us too much to leave us the way we are and sometimes we have some stubborn things inside of us that god literally has to break us to get those things out of us and he he is very comfortable doing that trust me on that very very comfortable so if there's pride a spirit of pride in you god very likely will break you because he wants to get that pride out of you and put something very positive inside of you, something very necessary inside of you. So he will break that. If you are a rebellious person, you're a child of God, you've accepted Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, but you have this rebelliousness about you, God will break you to remove that rebelliousness and replace it with something that we generally call obedience or submission to the will of God. So that's the first thing he will do in terms of breaking us to do something positive and very necessary inside of us. That's letter A. Now letter B, under 11, that God will break us. This is good. To do something through us. All right? You want to do something in us, yes. But you also do something through us. And, and this one, is, this one is, is hurtful, but you're going to understand it. He wants to bring new life out of us. Maybe new life in us, out of us, or new life through us to someone else. Listen to this. In John 12 and verse 24, from the Amplified Bible, it says, I assure you most solemnly, John 12, 24, in case you missed it. I assure you most solemnly, I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just one grain it never becomes more, but lives by itself alone. In other words, it doesn't produce fruit. But if it dies, it produces many others and yields a rich harvest. You getting it? God will break you like he breaks a, a kernel of corn. It falls in the ground and it dies. But when it dies, new life springs out of that many of us have done that a uh, little i don't know quite experiment where you get a i think it's a bean and you put it in a in a, a petri dish a, a little beaker or whatever uh with a moist toilet in there and then you see it spring up this little green shoot comes out of it but it has to die in order for that new shoot to come out and create new life when that new life is created that new life also produces other new life so one of the reasons that god will break you and i is so he can do something through us bring new life out of us and the reference is john 12 24 unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies it remains just one grain this is good stuff and i i encourage you to take time to meditate or go back over these messages if you're making notes read over your notes maybe in your devotional time and you know it might help you to, to understand the perspective of what you may be going through but also what others are going through and how god deals with us as his children 
the third, um, sorry, I want to share one more thing with that. Uh, and that comes from an experience I had in Malawi on one of my mission trips that I used to take with a group called Uplift International. We went to the north of Malawi, a place called Mazuzu. Uh, this is one of the most difficult things that, that I have ever uh, faced, but it's something that broke me. Uh, we, we had gone to the north to do a medical clinic. Yes, I was involved in a medical clinic. I was actually filling prescriptions, but we had a qualified pharmacist there who checked every prescription that I filled to make sure that I did not kill anyone. Um, but we had a medical doctor, uh, we had a, a, a physician, sorry, medical doctor and a pharmacist, and then it was myself working with the spiritual aspect, and then another young lady who came along as a helper. Um, and as we did this, I, I remember people came from miles away uh, to come to this medical clinic. And they came and they lined up, I mean, from very early in the morning, waiting for us to arrive at the at the center where we would do this medical uh, clinic. And we worked as long as we could. By that, I mean, we were supposed to cut off at four o'clock. I think it was not until before, just before five, that we actually shut the clinic down and left. But there were many people who had not been able to see the doctor. Here's the reality. In a country like Malawi, which has somewhere between 7 and 10 million people, my understanding back in the time when we were there, this was back in, in the late 90s, there, there were estimated to be about 200 doctors. 200, you heard right, in Malawi. 200, with a population of 7 to 10 million. So the reality is many, many people in Malawi uh, live their entire lives and die and never once see a doctor. Um, and I remember when we, we sh finally shut the clinic down and we were driving away, little children were running behind the Jeep that we were in. And I remember the sinking feeling I had in my heart because as I was looking back at these children, I was looking over medicine that these people needed that we did not have the time to give them. And we did not know if they would ever see a doctor again in the entire lifetime. It broke me. But you see, out of that came a new compassion for the loss, a new compassion for the needs of people all the way around, a new appreciation for the things that I have. We can go to many doctors, many polyclinics, get free medical care uh, in Barbados, but there are people all over the world who do not have any access to medicines, medical facilities, and medical practitioners. Uh, so God will break you because he wants to bring new life out of you to be a blessing to others. Number, letter C of number 11. All right, letter C. One of the reasons that God will break you, that is a lot of bad things to happen to you, is to build, rebuild, or reshape us into what he wants us to be. To build, rebuild, or reshape us into what he wants us to be. In Jeremiah chapter 18 from the complete Jewish Bible, verse number one, Jeremiah 18, one through four, complete Jewish Bible. It says, this word came to Jeremiah from Adonai. Get up and go down to the potter's house. There I will tell you more. So I went down to the house of the potter and there he was working at the wheels. Whenever a pot he made came out imperfect, listen carefully, the potter took the clay and made another pot with it in whatever shape suited him. The New Living Translation says he crushed it into a lump of clay. So as the potter is working on this clay, lump of clay, and it doesn't come out the way he needs it to be, he will literally crush it back down into a new lump, put it on a wheel, and start again. God wants to build, rebuild, or reshape you into what he wants you to be. And sometimes it requires him to crush you, to break you, and to start over again or to rebuild you into what he wants you to be. It says whatever shape suited him. Uh, it is a way of, of creating something out of other things, if I can take, you know, a lump of clay 
but then you shape it into a vessel that is useful for you. Listen, if you want if you want to bake a nice cake, you want to bake a nice cake, the ingredients have to be beaten or mixed. Then the mixture must be baked 350 to 400 degrees, depending on what type of cake you're doing. But you can't get a nice cake unless you mash everything up, put it together, and then put it in, in, in an environment that will allow it to become something that's beautiful, edible, and wonderful to take care, to, to share in. Uh, if you want to get a nice steak, have a nice steak to eat. I'm not using pork illustration, I'm using beef. If you want a nice steak, you got to put it on the grill, you got to put it in the fire in order to get it to be in, in a way that you can consume it and, and enjoy it. But you can't just take a raw piece of meat and eat it. Uh, you can't do that unless you're dealing with sushi, but let's talk about that another time. If you want a nice car, that metal must be drilled, it must be burnt, it must be heated, it must be bent, and it must also be screwed. You can take that however you want. All right, let's move on. It's a way of purifying and, and, and building or molding us into his image and into his image for us. Get that? His image, but also his image for us. Because all of us are not supposed to be the same. Each of us is different. So God will break you uh, to mold you into the, his image for us, um, uh, into his image, like him, but also into what he wants us to be. Some lessons simply cannot be learned unless you go through the fire or under the anvil or onto the potter's wheel, then God can do what he wants with you. Number 12, number 12, why does God allow bad things to happen to his children? Number 12 is different, hang on to this. Sometimes bad things happen to us because they are self-inflicted, that's number 12. It's not that God allows it to happen to us. We do it to ourselves. Many physical ailments, bad things, we bring upon ourselves. As a result of poor dietary habits and the lack of exercise. My hand is up. I'm guilty. Our stress-saturated world also contributes to many ailments. How we deal with that stress can bring on physical, mental, and emotional ailments. Bad things. We can't do anything about the stress. The stress is here. But how you deal with it can also make you quite ill. And yet there's empirical evidence that many persons have reversed serious life-threatening conditions simply by changing their diets to a whole foods plant-based diet or, or should I say, and getting physically active. People have reversed serious, serious physical problems through their diet and exercise. There's much practical information available for good dietary practices. As we're coming to the end of this year, moving into a new year, some of us need to take a hard look at what we eat, how we eat, and whether we are exercising and moving and physically active. Uh, I want to recommend three books to you. The first is called The Blue Zones. The Blue Zones. Um, uh, this book deals with studies that have been done on areas in the world where they have a very high percentage of centenarians, people who have lived to 100 years or more. Barbados could have been included in that because we are one of those blue zones. But the, Barbados was not included for some reason. Uh, but it's an excellent book to read, an excellent book to uh, check out a practical lifestyle. All right. Another one is called How Not to Die. How Not to Die. And the third one is called Forks over knives forks over knives you can check them out for yourself if you want to move into a new dietary practice in the new year check out those books you'll probably find them on amazon that's my guess uh anyway i also want to to proffer or posit these are nice words that the neglect of scriptural disciplines and the indulgence in biblically identified sinful behavior all right the neglect of, of scriptural principles and practices as well as the involvement in um, scripturally 
identified as sinful behavior. This can also lead to various ailments and even death. Yes, it can. Sometimes indirectly by the spiritual choices that we make. For example, Ephesians 6 talks about putting on the full armor of God to be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. One of the things that the devil will inflict you with is disease. Bad things will happen too. If you don't put the armor of God on, you can be attacked uh, and terrible things can happen to you, including physical ailments, because you have neglected to do what the Word of God says you ought to do. All right? Dabbling with sinful things, playing with fire, opening yourselves and opening doors in your life to different ways that, that the enemy can come in and attack you. Rebellion, disobedience, lack of faith, fear. All these things can affect us and, and open the door for bad things to happen to us. And it is not God's doing. It is self-inflicted. Either because of the choices that you make uh, or because of the things that you do, you bring those bad things into your life and they can mess you up. And, uh, and then sometimes you run to God and, and we say, God, heal me, heal me, heal me. And, you know, sometimes God does heal us. But you know what some of us do? We go to God, we get healed, and we go back and do the same thing we were doing that brought the bad condition on in the first place, right? So I think God in his wisdom sometimes, he says, you change your lifestyle and you will find the healing there. You know, you run to me to do healing when it the power is in your hand to heal yourself, but do the right thing. Sometimes you see a lot of ministers or people in choirs and so on, and they're just huge. Uh, way overweight yeah, and I look at them and I say you know but this can't be good but I can't judge them because I'm overweight myself so you know but the reality is beloved we bring things on ourselves and then we say well God why do you allow this to happen to me God didn't allow it to happen to you you cause it to happen to yourself all right some of us are eating ourselves to death we are dying one forkful at a time or one spoonful at a time that's not the plan of God for your life let me go on. Number 13. Our time is moving rapidly. Number 13. This won't take long. Why does God allow bad things to happen to his children? Well, sometimes it is a natural consequence of living in a fallen, sinful world. It is a natural consequence of living in a fallen, sinful world. All right? So it's not something that God kind of allows or, or even ordains in your life. It is a result of being born into a sinful world. What happens if you're born into a household of evil people? Your evil people, your mother and father or your mother, you know, depending on your birth situation, they're evil, right? And you're born into that situation. Do you think God is going to just put a bubble around you? It doesn't work like that. Uh, so sometimes bad things happen to us simply because of where we were born. Or if you're born into a situation of abject poverty, like in Malawi, where it talked about uh, people not, never seeing a doctor in their entire lives. Um, God isn't, isn't going to just step in and say, okay, well, you know what? I can protect you. It doesn't work like that. It does not work like that. Uh, some of those people die of starvation, literally die of starvation. Um, sometimes there there is the consequence of evil in this world and evil people. I'm not talking about your household. I'm talking about the world all around us. They're evil people. People that, that, that are out there to swindle you, destroy you, uh, do bad things in your life. They're there. They're there. Uh, and if, if, if I have it somewhere, I just want to see where I have it. Yeah, there it is. Um, People are controlled by the God of this world. I don't mean God, Jesus Christ. I mean Satan. You can find it in 2 Corinthians 4.4 4, where the devil is referred to as the God of this world. So if you're in a world that is kind of the devil's world, uh, you know what? Some bad thing is going to happen simply because we are in this horrible world. All right? COVID-19 is there. Christians have died with COVID-19. Christians have been protected from COVID-19. Every morning I get up, I pray, God, cover my family, cover my wife's family, protect us from COVID-19. Because the reality is, this thing can kill you. Whether you're a Christian or not, doesn't make any difference. It can kill you. So every morning I pray and ask God to cover our family. So sometimes it's just a natural consequence of being 
born or living in a fallen, sinful world. Number 14, we're going quite well. Number 14, number 14, why does God allow bad things to happen to his children? Well, to fill up his cup of wrath against the ungodly. I'm giving you so many reasons why bad things can happen in your life, why God allows bad things to happen. Uh, and this is this is good teaching for you. Sometimes God allows bad things to happen to his children to fill up his cup of wrath against the ungodly. Genesis 15, 16, Amplified Bible says, And in the fourth generation, they, your descendants, shall come back here to Canaan again, for the iniquity of the Amorites is not yet full and complete. Uh, if I may use a little illustration very quickly with a child, you know that children test us, especially when they're small. They, they want to see how far they can push you before you give them a little lash or, you know, a little correction. Uh, it is different in North America than it is in Barbados. We are very comfortable giving our children a lash. <laughs> it's not a problem here. Um, we, we don't have a whole lot of situations where children call 911 for their parents. Uh, we grew up being spanked, and so we spank our children when it is necessary. There's a difference between spanking, correction, or discipline, and abuse. All right, so we're not talking about abuse. What we're talking about, God has a cup, a cup of iniquity, that basically you have to get to the point where God says, okay, enough is enough. And then he will react or respond to your foolishness. And sometimes, you know, you've not done enough for God to respond. So he will actually allow the ungodly to do things to us to fill up their cup so that then he can judge them. I hope that is clear to you. All right. Uh, again, it doesn't seem fair, but this is what God does. So the ungodly are allowed to persecute us, etc., 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 um, to fill their cup of wrath, and then God pours out his judgment upon them. So sometimes we are victims of that. Number 15, and I'm almost through. Almost, not quite through yet. Number 15, well, punishment for sin, that we might be saved. Punishment for sin, that we might be saved. You ready for this? I'm going to read one verse of scripture from three different versions of the Bible. And I am sure that by the time I'm finished, you will have this point down pat. Hebrews 12, verse 6. Punishment for sin that we might be saved. That's why God will allow bad things to happen to us. Their punishment. Listen. For the Lord disciplines those he loves. And he punishes each one he accepts as his child. Same thing we're talking about in terms of discipline a child. You give him a spank sometimes or you send him to the corner. That child considers that a bad thing. But is it really a bad thing? The answer is yes, it is a bad thing. Nobody likes to be spanked. Nobody likes to be punished. Nobody likes to be corrected or disciplined. Nobody likes that. But it's a bad thing that happens for a good reason. Let me read the same verse from the Amplified Bible, Hebrews 12, 6. For the Lord corrects and disciplines everyone whom he loves. And he punishes, even scourges, every son whom he accepts and welcomes to his heart and cherishes. Wow, those are strong words. Because God loves us, he will sometimes have to punish us. Because we do stupidness, God says, if I allow you to keep doing that, you will destroy yourself. I'm not going to allow that to happen, so I will discipline you. However you want to call that discipline, God will allow a bad thing to happen to you or even ordain a bad thing to happen to you to correct you and get you on the right track. Let me read one more, Hebrews 12, 6. For Adonai, complete Jewish Bible, disciplines those he loves and whips everyone he accepts as a son. There you have it. <laughs> However you look at it, yeah, it doesn't sound good at all. Punishes, scourges, whips, you know... All these terms, the reality is that God will put us through some bad things because he wants us to be saved. He wants us to be saved. If want, save, always save were true, God would never have to discipline us or correct us. 
we could do whatever we want and we end up in heaven. That is not true. Let me give you another perspective. 2 Corinthians 7 verse 8 through 10. 2 Corinthians 7 verse 8 through 10. And we're almost through. I'm almost on holiday. Praise the name of the Lord. I'm enjoying myself this morning. My wife is laughing at me. Listen. Paul says to the church at Corinth. Horrible, horrible church. All kinds of problems. Paul says, I am not sorry. Verse 8, New Living Translation. I am not sorry that I sent that severe letter to you. Though I was sorry at first, but for I know it was painful to you for a little while. Now, I am glad I sent it. Not because it hurt you, but because the pain caused you to repent and change your ways. Like when you get a little lash on that son's or daughter's backside, the pain causes them to change their ways. This is what Paul is saying to the church at Corinth. It was the kind of sorrow God wants his people to have. So you were not harmed by us in any way by this severe rebuke. For the kind of sorrow God wants us to experience leads us away from sin and results in salvation. I mean, you can't get it more clear than that. There's no regret for that kind of sorrow, but worldly sorrow which lacks repentance results in spiritual death. God wants us to have spiritual life, and so sometimes he will apply the rod of correction to the seed of understanding so that we will repent of our sinful ways and go in the right direction. We are almost through. Listen to this. Number 16. I said I had 15 for you. Well, anyway, number 16. Number 16. This is actually a repeat of something I said at the very beginning. I believe it was in uh, part two. Very, very. And I'm just bringing it back to your attention because I've shared with you 15 biblical solid reasons why God allows bad things to happen to his children. And number 16 is to remind you that even though many times the things that we go through do not make sense, God chooses not to reveal to us why. God chooses sovereignly not to reveal to us why we are going through it. And I, I want to bring that back to your attention because even though I've shared 15 reasons with you, none of the above may actually be uh, confirmed by God as to why you are going through or will go through what you will go through. Sometimes God just doesn't tell us. He doesn't explain it to us. Sometimes as we go down the road, we look back and we say, oh, I now understand why that happened. I now understand why God put me through that. And sometimes it's years, many years later that we understand why we went through what we went through. Right? As I mentioned last week, sometimes he is, he is doing stuff um, in us so that we can then share that glory and share that uh, grace with other people when they're going through what we went through. And and, and sometimes in our in our human reasoning it, it, it doesn't make sense. It doesn't seem fair. But when you understand the holiness of God uh, have you watched that yet? The holiness of God? When, when you understand that, that message when I'm going to go back to it. But that was my last reflections. When, when you understand the holiness of God you begin to comprehend that hey, God God is never unfair. He does not have it within him to be unfair or unjust. It, it is simply not a part of his DNA. So anything, everything that happens to you, you have to understand that there's purity in that. When it is discipline, punishment, whatever it is, when it is the beating of an egg and flour and sugar to make a nice cake, all of that is done out of purity, out of absolute love. It, it is incredible when you understand the holiness of God. Um, God is blindingly pure. He's so pure it's almost that like you can't look at him. He just, he's just too pure for our fallen eyes to behold. So look, you're going to have some, some issues. God may not choose to tell you why. But I'm going to close this message by making two promises to you. All right, I'm going to make two promises to you. You ready? Promise number one. 
troubles, trials, difficulties, challenges, bad things are going to happen to you. That's my first promise. You are going to go through bad things. If Some of us have gone through already. Some of us is coming. Some of us who have gone through already, more coming. You, I promise you that. You are going, if the Lord doesn't come back, you're going to go through bad things. You're going to go through things that will break you, things that will hurt you, things that will frustrate you, things that will anger you, things that will disappoint you. But you are going to go through them, whether you like it or not. That's God's promise to you. You're going to go through bad things. You do not have a free pass like a Monopoly card. You don't have it. It's not there. Yeah, If you're going to live a godly life, you're going to suffer persecution. You are going to go through bad things. I promise you that. Very clearly and very carefully. Promise number two. Whatever happens, whatever you face, whatever you go through, God, your God, your Lord and Savior Jesus Christ will be with you every step of the way. Every moment of every day, in every trial, in every test, in every difficult place, in every bad thing that you go through, God will be with you every step of the way. Through your disappointments, through your fears, through your ranting and, and raving, through your failures and defeats, He will never leave you and He will never forsake you. He is our God. He's the one true living and loving God and He's faithful to His word and He will exercise all of who He is in His sovereignty. So, beloved, don't challenge God. Don't question God with a wrong attitude as to what you may be facing and dealing with and going through what you're going through. Don't do that. Our faith in God must be such that whatever God allows, whatever God ordains, whatever God does not prevent in happening in our lives, somehow either He has done it for a good reason or he will work it together with other things for our good and for his glory. The scripture says, and we know, we know that all things work together, even though they may be bad, they work together. The, the eggs and the flour and the butter, all these things that you put there may not be nice in themselves, but when you put them together and you put them in the right environment, what you get coming out is something absolutely beautiful. So commit yourself into the hands of a wonderful, loving Savior and Shepherd. And know that any bad thing you go through, not only is He there with you, but He will bring good out of it. Father, we thank you for this study. We thank you for the opportunity to look into your word and to answer a question that is on the hearts of many people. And God, we know and we understand by your Holy Spirit that you are working in us to perfect us, to mature us, to bring us into the image of Jesus Christ and to make us into what you would have us to be as individual members of the body of Christ. I pray that there will be a hunger and a thirst inside of all of us to know the truth, to know the truth of your word, to know the truth of who you are and how you operate, and to know the truth about how we ought to live our lives as Christians, especially in the year 2020 and into the year 2021. So God, forgive us where we have had a wrong attitude. Forgive us where we have become angry at your working in our lives or the things that you have allowed. Forgive us, O oh God, for charging you wrongly. And help us, O oh God, to walk and live in submission to your will under your divine hand, knowing that the God of our salvation is a great, big, wonderful God who does nothing by chance and who will never deal with us 
in a way that is anything other than just, true, and right, out of a heart of love and compassion for us as children. Lord, we give you thanks, and we give you praise, in the mighty name of Jesus, amen, and amen. Those of you who may be viewing this broadcast, you may not have understood all the things that I've said. Um, if you're not a Christian, you may not understand these spiritual concepts, but I want to challenge you. You will never live a better life than living for the Lord Jesus Christ. It is not an easy road. It is not an easy path. I don't care what anybody tells you. I am telling you, you want to live a Christian life? It's going to be tough. Yes, there are blessings. There are good things that God will bless us with and give us uh, throughout our lifestyle, our lifetime. But you're going to have some difficult things to face and to deal with. And you're going to have some difficult people <laughs> to face and to deal with. But you know what? I can tell you from my own personal experience, walking with the Lord for over uh, 50 years, 49 years actually, I can tell you there is no regret in serving the Lord, no regret in confessing my sins and asking God to forgive me and open my heart and invite him to come in to be my Lord and doing my best to follow his way. There's no regret in that. If I had to live my life all over again, I would do the same thing. And I want to encourage you, especially as we're coming to the end of this year, second last day of November, this message is going out. Hey, don't let the year catch you not serving the Lord. If you're a backslider, come back. Come back to the Lord. Maybe you become bitter against God because of something that happened. You lost a loved one. Maybe it was tragic. Whatever the case is. Listen, you cannot make a mistake by serving the Lord. And whatever you have inside that you're dealing with that you can't quite sort out, ask that same God to help you. And he will. He'll change you. He'll make you into something beautiful just like the clay on the potter's wheel when it doesn't come out the way it ought to be. He will crush it down and reform it or rebuild it into exactly what he wants. God will do the same thing for you. Listen, God bless you if you're a Barbadian. Enjoy your Independence Day tomorrow, uh, November 30th. If you're not a Barbadian, well, you know, pray for us as we are dealing with the economic fallout as well as uh, COVID-19. So many visitors coming to our island are coming with uh, COVID-19. But we thank God that he has spared us as a nation. We've had very few deaths to date. We've just had seven deaths in this whole pandemic. And I think that is absolutely wonderful and amazing. And we give God the glory for that. Again, God bless you. Look for me December 6th, December 24th, and then December 31st. December 31st, 11.15 in the evening. Uh, December 24th, 8 o'clock Christmas Eve in the morning live. But the messages will all be there on my Facebook page as well as on YouTube, my channel. You can check them out whenever you are ready to so do. God bless you. Thank you for sharing with me in this broadcast and on this teaching on why does God allow bad things to happen to his children. We will see you very soon again with the word of God. Amen. It's done. Let me know how you want people to respond to two things you said. That's bad, sir. I don't know about things like that. I'm screwed. I worry about things like that, uh...